welcome back to episode 96 of Tourboy Radio. And for those of you that recognise voices, it's me, it's Gaz. I'm in the driving seat uh, this week. Um, can't remember the last time uh, I did host one. Well, it might have been a couple of weeks. Um, seems like ages ago, um, maybe because I had a couple of weeks hiatus away from it. But um, looking forward to this. Um, just before we get into the nitty gritty and the crux of the podcast this week, um, I'm just going to introduce um, our two regular hosts. Uh, alongside myself and we have a guest so we'll go to the two regular guys first so do you want to introduce yourselves and let everybody know what you're drinking yeah sure i'll go first it is beans here and i'm drinking a beer that is often drank on the podcast and it's left but just by way of a change i'm going with the left brun normally we go with the blonde so i've got the the brun here it's a little bit weaker 6.5 and I've got to be honest, it's not quite as good, but I thought I'd get it for a change anyway. 96 episodes, 96 different beers, and then let's see what turns up next week. All right, cool. Like it. Andy? That's what he preaches. Like one of our most talked about brewers, brew dog, <laughs> and uh, La Trap Trappies. Yeah, it's quite That's nice. Right. I can't sum up the flavour other than drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um yeah we've got a guest um on this evening's podcast um he's been with us um sort of a couple of times two or three times now i think so um you might recognize him from the devil's advocate um podcast and the one that he did a couple of weeks ago so um do you want to introduce yourself yeah hi, hi guys good to be on again um i'm drinking the duchess de burgon is that how you pronounce it um, it's shit, it'll do. It's um, it's it's either a foul or very foul, I, I believe. And um, and just in case I can't stomach that, I've got the uh, TBR Stone Cold Stunner. Stone oh, yeah. Cold Stunner, happy days. That's my, yeah. that's my backup. And if that goes wrong, Adam also dropped off a couple of the Double Trouble Pale Ales that I've got in the oh, fridge okay. just there. So I've got all bases covered. Yeah, you go, um, you, you're going to need it with those two beers. It's out of the frying pan and into the go fire. On then, go on then, go on then, let's have the taste test. I tell you what, the Duchess smells awful. <laughs> but but then again, I quite like the Marmite. Oh my God. <laughs> now that is a, that, that's a challenge. You did, is it supposed to take like, 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 yeah. it's like supposed what? to taste that bad, yeah. Not like bad. It's like pickles. Like, oh, like I thought, pickles. I, you broke up. I thought you said testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, you know. Oh, dear. And the thief said I <laughs> No, that's, um, you know, that's a bit. Adam dropped off the, uh, what was the one you dropped off the other week? The um, layer cake. Oh, like, get, yeah. Yes, layer cake. Yeah. And uh, I tried that, and it was one of... <sighs> I can't. I couldn't make up my mind whether I liked it or really disliked it. It's really odd. And this, this is the same. It's kind of at the same time as being horrible. It's actually something about it. I'm thinking, no, I quite like this. So, you know, really, okay. with the layer cake so far. Ah, oh, dude, honestly, the layer cake. I think it's a lovely beer, chocolate stout, flavored with pink marshmallow, nice and sweet. You wouldn't put it on your chips. Yeah. No. no what like this? You mean? Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's good for. We're going to do a taste test on that, yeah. to be fair. And we we're going we we're gonna to have the Duchess and Sarsons and see whether or not we could tell the difference. Um, and we're just going to pop them into a glass and away you go. It'd be like, I'd be struggling, I'll be honest with you. I think, no, I think you'd love the Sarsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> um, just before we, we, we sort of move on and just before I get into what I want to chat about, um, it's been a while since we've mentioned it and they're going to get two mentions in the first two minutes of the podcast, but um, Brewdog, I've just released, I don't know whether you pick this up, guys, um, it's the first carbon negative beer. So remember when we talked about sustainability and Brewdog and all of that, um, and we talked about sort of carbon neutral, apparently this is the first carbon negative beer. And I was listening to it um, just while uh, it was on the radio and advert, and I can't fly if we remember what the beer was called now. So um, Andy's going to Google it very, very quickly now because we all know that he's, he's got a computer on. So, But it's the first carbon negative. And what they did say is they said, if you're going to try it, we'll give everyone a tenner. So I'm not quite sure how that works um, on the radio. It's like, oh, if you try this beer, then we'll, we'll give everyone a tenner. 
Okay, <laughs> winner. Um, yeah. And if you've got a ten, if you've got a ten, you're halfway towards that four pack that Andy's drinking there because that's twenty quid for those Belgian ones. Yeah, so it's a, it's just it's just weird that we yeah we, we obviously we had a bit of a um a sort of a, a weekly brew dog. It was like it, like the daily brew dog sort of thing on our podcast, but without mentioning them for for a while. Um, twenty four hour theory, obviously. Yeah. Andy's just mentioned them, and I just thought, oh, that came to mind because it was, it was a radio advert. So, Andy, go on. What 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 was it called? Um, I can't see it. I've just seen an article on the web page, um, just saying okay. they bought a bit of land and they planted a lot of trees. All uh, right, yeah, well, yeah, we covered that. They said, was it largest sustain anyway sustainable forest? Is that the one in Scotland? Is it somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we mentioned that. Um, but yeah, no, so if, if, if Andy finds, finds out what it's called um, throughout this evening's podcast, then. Um, so but just before we get into it, though, um, I just want to say big thanks really to um, to Bo again. I know we, we mentioned it and um, really enjoyed chatting to the guy. I can't wait for him to sort of pop over and uh, hopefully we can grab a couple of beers in person and stuff. So a um, bit of a shame it, it sort of couldn't happen. Um, but yeah, seemed like a really top guy. So really, really, really looking forward to that. So a bit of a shout out to him. So uh both if you're listening which i know you do um fair, fair play to you fella and look, look forward to having a beer in person with you so um just before we move on any other shout outs at all from anybody just a quick one from me and it's two guys that hopefully we're going to get on the podcast next week ryan and brad from the pub time podcast i don't know if you've listened to any of their podcasts but they're really good really really similar sort of principle to ours two guys grab a beer and have a little bit of a chat about whatever it is that's on our minds. Well worth a listen, two guys from Illinois. And with a little bit of luck, they're going to be with us next week. I know Ryan's confirmed. We're just waiting on some of Brad's commitments to come through. And it's one to look forward to. If it's not next week, it'll be sometime in the future. But if not, go listen to them as well. Cool. Um, Andy, anybody in particular or just, just a normal crew? Um, normal crew. Give Bill a good mention. Better mention. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we we suspect he might be responsible for country number, however many countries. Forty. Forty. Yeah, forty. Um, so, Bill, yeah, great stuff, pal. And we'll look forward to um, potentially hooking up with your new pal from was it Oklahoma? He said or something was that way? So yeah. he's from. So, um, my my shout out or what my other shout out um, is actually um, to the bald headed guy with with the ginger beard because. I'm drinking a left, and I don't know if you can pick that up, but Andy sent me that, which is a left glass. So fair play to you, kid. I absolutely love that. So um, big shout out, big thanks, pal. Um, didn't expect it, love it. Um, and obviously, I'm drinking a left out of it as well. So um, so really, really appreciate that, Andy. So uh, yeah, um, cheers for that, buddy. Um, and I'll enjoy lots and lots of, of drinks out of that, no doubt. Um, just... Um, news today and and i'm you know i'm a big sports fan have you either of you heard of azim rafiq never have, have you heard of azim rafiq in any sporting capacity whatsoever Wait, he's been it? absolutely all like oh yeah all over the news yeah yeah have you picked up the story at all or not or yeah i've been following it it's uh he's been in uh talking to mps today hasn't he yeah he has yeah yeah um for those of you that don't know he's he's um a, a county cricketer um, played for Yorkshire um, for, for a number of years, and basically, um, was he class a whistleblower? But basically, he, he stood up and said that he he had faced sort of years of um, racist abuse and comments and things happened to him. And if you follow the story, some of the some of the comments of the thing and the people that he's mentioned, firstly, you think, wow, okay. Um, and some of the things he said that he had to put up with and he had to endure, it's actually quite shocking. Um, and whilst Yorkshire Cricket Club, County Cricket Club, have been named, he's actually saying it, it's quite widespread. So and it sort of paints a really bad picture of cricket as a sport and stuff. Um, so you know he's saying at the age of fifteen, he was held down in his, one of his local bars, and he's he's obviously of um, I think he's Pakistani origin, so Asian player, Muslim, practicing Muslim, fifteen year old boy held down and red wine was poured down his throat, and it's just like. Wow, how can that even be tolerable in this day and age, sort of thing? And um, various use of the word, the, the the p word, and and very very derogatory sort of comments being made. Right, you, there's too many of you lot. Right, you lot going to sit over there on a table on your own, and all this sort of stuff. And you're like, what, really? And like, it, basically for years and years and years. Um, Dave, I don't know what your slant is. You obviously you've sort of 
picked it up and you followed it. What, what's your sort of take on it? Is, is it slightly more widespread than Yorkshire or is it just in them being institutionally sort of racist effectively? Um, I think it, I think it's got to be more widespread. That kind of thing doesn't just happen in one place. Um, and, and, and you read you read the different views and, and you know, you keep hearing people say it's just banter. And, and, and I think people confuse banter with racism too easily. Uh, yeah. You say something racist to somebody and they come back and say, oh, yeah, you're a, you're a ginger or you're bald. Uh, and somehow it, it's a guy. It's something to give you there, Andy. <laughs> and, so, and, somehow, and somehow that's kind of uh, equality and therefore that's OK. Um, and, and I think, you know, people probably fall into the trap and they probably don't realise through, through ignorance that they're actually being racist and pretty hurtful. And then even um, the guy in South said it when he was at Yorkshire at the first time and he was there, then he left and went back. So I think I think it's even um, in their own mind of someone who's quite young playing cricket in there that they kind of don't quite see it in the same way until they manage to step back and reflect how bad it was. Um, I mean, yeah, it's hard to say whether there's out and out racists at, at Yorkshire, people that as in people that have in their mind that they are racist, they hate yeah. people of colour, or whether they are just say things that are racist and, and are ignorant to the fact that they are being racist. I mean, that, that's not an excuse, but but, in, but are they like that? Um, or do they not even realise at all? And they genuinely think it's banter. Um, it's, probably, it's possibly a mix of all of those. Um, and, it, and it's not just cricket, is it? It's, it's yeah, we, yeah. We, see, we see it throughout society as a whole. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and he, you know, he was saying, and Joe Root was mentioned by him, and, and, and he said, whilst Joe Root didn't say anything um, so very overtly racist, um, because Joe Root, obviously, is England test captain, and so he came out and said he can't remember being present at any, sort of when anything racist was happening, anything racist was said. And fair enough. And, and as Zim Rafiq said, he might not, because it was so what's the word, systemic, is that the right word? It was so systemic that it literally was like a daily occurrence. So he probably won't remember it, whereas just that Azim was saying, I remember every single thing because it was like a daily thing. And he said it, it became so prevalent that the guys that were saying it just must have thought it was just, it was just okay. So so when actually questioned, they probably genuinely were going, no, I don't remember anything. But actually he said, I remember every single day of it. You know, And that's like quite a worrying sort of story, really. And obviously we've got, the ongoing issues with sort of racism, in particular when you look at um, sort of European football and some of the, um, some of the, the and I, I don't want to be, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but perhaps some of the the the, the, the minor sort of footballing nations where you know um, the bigger teams have sort of um, players of colour, black players playing, and they get racially abused, and and I, I just hope we don't, we're not slightly sliding towards. I don't know, historically, would it be like the late 70s, early 80s when it was, you know, quite bad sort of thing? Um, you know, and I hope we're not sort of sliding down to that, down that route again. Um, and I think it's he, the opposite. He, I, you I, do. I think it's a generational well, thing, yeah, where all the old people are, you know, different views and, you know, it was a different time back then. Not that that's an excuse, but I wonder yeah. whether it just needs to die out. And so, like, Eastern European and stuff is where... It still yeah. happens, but is that because I think that's just because a bit behind the times in this PC world we live in. I think. Do you, do you think that's? Do you think it is an education thing, and that actually that? And you've mentioned that you know the the, the Eastern sort of European countries, they they just maybe because they don't because their national team and their their national side don't have players of colour, they just don't see it a lot in there. For it's like an education thing, or or not? I don't know. Yeah, C countries like that would be educational. I think. Countries like Britain, it's more just the older generations, and I think yeah. most of it will die out as as people start dropping off. So, so do you think that? Do you think there's more? I mean, obviously, we're in a very we're supposed to be in a very tolerant sort of society now. So, do you think that there's more tolerance as such towards, in particular, to sort of racism? But you look at sort of sexism and ageism and all of those sort of things. I mean, people talk about the snowflake sort of society and community. Do you think we are slightly more tolerant, or? I'd say people on the whole, yeah. But then I think there is obviously the individuals that are no. Yeah. But I, I've never, well, obviously, I've never it targeted me, but I've grown up with all different people around me, you know, sexual orientations and colours of skin, and never yeah. really 
they've said to me they've never had it that bad. But it just obviously depends on the area and stuff. But yeah, okay. Uh, I think that that's a big thing where you grow up. I mean, where me, Adam, and and, and Gaz grow up and, and live now, it, it's predominantly white to quite a high, quite a high percentage. Um, my my wife is Afro Caribbean. My kids are are mixed race or or dual heritage or whatever the the current label is. Um, yeah. So you know, and they they've had a couple of instances growing up, nothing serious, but they've had a yeah. couple of instances where the kids have had to go and report it. At, college because a kid said something that um you know albert found um you know right i don't know racist was perhaps the correct word but he was saying something that was racist in 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 the words um and, and he went and reported it um, yeah. but just you know an 11 12 year old kid probably not understanding why or equally yeah. the same words that he's picked up from somewhere um so whilst he might not in any way meant harm to Albert, the words that were coming out of his mouth have come from somewhere and they were racist. Um, and I think that um, if you grow up in a predominantly white area, it, it, I guess it, it's, it's, you are less tolerant if you grow up but you're not mixing with people of different cultures and backgrounds. Um, I mean, Catherine comes from London, uh, which is like to- totally, you know, all of her friends growing up were all different races, whereas mine were all white. You know? Yeah, because there wasn't. I mean, I mean, even the sec. I mean, I say when we went to secondary school, there were, I mean, certainly I don't remember because obviously, me and Dave, we, we were we were at primary school um, together. And there was certainly nobody. I don't think in our year group that, that that was black. And I think maybe going through school, maybe was it one or two in our year group? Maybe out of a, however many, like you know, a year group of 200. I don't know, two hundred or whatever it was, two twenty, whatever it was. And I think yeah. it, uh, maybe a couple. Yeah. Um, but then even saying that, you know, um, yeah, we've grown up completely uh, finding racism abhorrent. Uh, mm-hmm. And that that's down to, to you know, our parents, uh, I guess, in the main and, yeah. and the people we hang out with when we're growing up. So yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it's black and white. <laughs> <laughs> that was not intentional. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a clear case of. Um, if you grow up in a predominantly white area, you're more likely to be racist, but you, you're more likely to perhaps be ignorant and say things without understanding. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think as generations move on, as Andy was saying, um, certainly in this country, as generations move on uh, and kids grow up, they are more um, more grounded and more um, um, more or, um, knowledgeable of different races. Yeah, more and, aware. And the you know the the LGBTQX plus plus sorry gas I knew I'd miss one <laughs> um, but, but all all of these issues and and you met you mentioned earlier about the the snowflakes or the woke or whatever it was and there's a you know that that it, it that's one end of the spectrum isn't it um, and I think somewhere in between is where the society certainly in this country is going and and I think it Andy's right that it will. It will die out. I mean, we must all remember our nans saying things that you just thought, Jesus, sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> flipping neck. You can't say that, nan. But there's absolutely no way in the world she meant any harm by it. Yeah, no. in my yeah. nan's case. Um, but yeah, and but that doesn't that doesn't happen. You when you were growing up, there might have been some aunts and uncles that said questionable things. But yeah. even, uh, even those same aunts and uncles now, twenty years, thirty years later. You don't hear them say it now. Whether I just don't hear them say it, yeah, or they they learn not to say these things. You don't. Yeah. I would like to no. think people realise what isn't isn't offensive, and um, you know, and adjust their language and their outlook on life accordingly. Yeah, okay. guys, you're in education though. It must be you know thinking back to when you were at school, and now thinking back to when you're teaching. It's much broader subjects, you know. I was speaking to my nephew who's just started secondary school. What they cover back then is very, very different to what we call covered. Sorry, it's different cultures, different traditions are acknowledged now rather than it just being, you know, this is what I grew up with, this is my traditions, and this is what my nan thinks. It's, yeah. it's, it's covered on all bases, isn't it? And that can only be a good thing, yeah. You say so, you know, you, you, you get. You get what would be classed as sort of an SMSC 
sort of curriculum, so spiritual, moral, society, cultural sort of curriculum and and you investigate and you, you look at lots of different and I suppose it would be in a way what historically might have been covered maybe in RE t- to a lesser extent but th- there's a whole curriculum now and then you get a lot of um, PSHE, your personal social health, education and stuff so there's lots of things that fundamental British values is a big thing in, in curriculums now and stuff so you do get a lot of sort of education and a lot of awareness hopefully um yeah. and it's, it wasn't it wasn't really what i was going to talk about on the podcast it's just it's a massive and i'm a massive sports fan and obviously it's a it, it, it's exploded over the news over the last couple of days just because he's as dave said you know he's he, he talking to a parliamentary review but interestingly he, he's 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 a, a a cricketer of pakistani origin who is talking about racism in parliament to a committee made up of entirely old white men. And you're just thinking, like, come on, like, really? And and there's a couple of ex-cricketers that have gone on and said, you know, that we need to start looking at board members and committee members and coaches. And, and I mean, come on. And they were talking about Yorkshire in particular, and it's the last really thing before we move on. You know, their whole playing staff, and you look at some of the areas within Yorkshire and, and some of the cities and some of the areas, you know, heavily predominantly sort of um, sort of Asian sort of communities. And I think they said there's like one contracted player for Yorkshire at the moment. And you're just like, really? Like, I, how does that work sort of thing? And they do lots of outreach stuff in the community. But, you know, the last thing you want is a 11, 12, 13 year old Asian, you know, UK born player saying, well, I don't want to go through what he's going through. So I'm going to, Move away from cricket, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, a consequence, isn't it? That, that's a consequence. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Um, so it's was just, it, it's just. Go on, Ad. Was it Ben Dillard like Beckham? I might be way off the uh, way out on on the kilt here, but I know it wasn't the best film in the world. But that was about an Asian girl breaking through into yeah. football. But there was a sub story in the background about her having an Asian father and the, his reasons for her not wanting to join. Whereas the way he was made to feel when he was trying to join the cricket team in the area where it was set, and I forget where it was set now. But I'm, yeah. you know, it's it's clearly it's clearly a thing that that's been, yeah. you know, on the tips of people's tongues for a while. And you know, you played you played cricket for all stage, and I'm not going to ask you to name names, but I, I bet you could you could probably name instances where where banter's probably gone too far. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. And obviously, I'm not, not going to name I hate. names, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about situations. But yeah, no. one one hundred percent. That you know. Um, I hate and, the word banter as well. By the way, I absolutely despise that word banter. It just annoys the piss out of me. Top banter. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway. Oh, well, that well that that went through. That was the thing. Oh, bants, bants, just bants. Well, is it? Because you might think it is, and and it's like most things. It's like if it's racist, sexist, ageist. You know, if if the person that you're talking to perceives it to be racist, sexist, whatever, then it is. You might not mean it in that way, but if they perceive it to be that way, then it is. It, it, it's how they feel, it, you know. So, um, you know, so bants, yeah, it's just bants. Well, is it? Um, That's the sort but, of yeah. like trap card, isn't it? To say, yeah. you know, it's like pushing it's someone downstairs. Oh, yeah. bants. It's like, no, it's just a get out. It's just a get out card, isn't it? It's just, a, oh, it's only bants. It's just a get out card. That, that, that's what it is. So, um, but m- m- moving on then, I mean, we went slightly dark then. I wasn't sort of maybe going to spend 15 minutes talking about that, but it's just something that went, you know, it's massively in the news. I just thought it'd be newsworthy worthwhile. Um, just in terms of newsworthy stories, and it wouldn't be a podcast that I lead without an NFL 10 minutes. Um, it wants to talk about the Steelers-Lions game. Because obviously, for those that don't know, Adam is a massive Steelers fan. Um, Andy is a Lions fan, getting to be a massive Lions fan. He's only relatively recently sort of on board with the NFL and stuff. But he wants to talk about that game because I attempted to watch it on uh, Red Zone. And oh my days, it was bad. Yeah, it literally was the worst game (laughs) I've ever seen of anything, ever. I'd like to see the stats (laughs) on, on, on dropped on dropped interceptions because literally it looked like a competition so you could throw the ball to the opposition <laughs> and then have them not catch it. It was re- it was I'm weird because you're like, Lions are going to win this. Oh, no, there's an interception. Oh, Steelers go down the other end. Oh, Steelers are going to win this. Oh, no, he fumbled it. It's like oh, neither no. the two teams wanted to win the game. 
It was embarrassing. I mean, he, good old Scott Hansen, I think he described it best. He, he said about the Lions, literally they're finding new ways to lose. But, you know, the Steelers put the foot down. It's like, yeah, no, you're not going to lose this one. We're going to try and lose it first. Don't you worry about that. It was Did you awful. see the last play? Did you see the last play of the game? Well, oh. it, it turned out to be the last play. So, basically, it's gone into overtime and the Steelers have missed an opportunity to win and the Lions have missed an opportunity to win. And, and, and the Steelers have got the ball and... I think they needed to get to I don't know, something like the 40-yard line or 35-yard line in order to make it a relatively straightforward field goal. So it was it Rudolph, was he QB, was he? And he drops back yes. and throws it to his tight end or whatever, who literally has nobody around him whatsoever. <laughs> and there's like three seconds to go. And all literally all he needs to do is catch the ball and put his foot out of bounds, which is like a yard away. That's it. That's all he has to do. Two seconds to go, field goal. Field goal team, come on, kick, Steelers win. What does he do? He drops a bloody ball. Oh, and it literally like three it was seconds non-stop. Ago, it's just re- ridiculous. It was, it was non-stop. It, it, was, it got to the point like, you know, I was watching it. Kim had gone to bed. She'd sort of said, we're going in the hot tub. It's like, no way. I want to wait. I want to wait. I'm not losing to bloody the zero and eight lion side. I mean, to be fair, we, they, they now can't be the first team to go 0 and, 0 and 17 in a whole season. They said, be the yeah, first, they said. be the first to go 0 16 and 1, like, but you know, they wouldn't be the first to go 0 and 17, but terrible game. I understand Big Ben's likely to be back next week, but I've just read Minka has been added now. Minka's got COVID as well, so he's been added to the, the uh, ineligible roster, so that's not good. Oh, uh, really? Oh, okay. So, right, fair enough. Um, so, anyway, so that that's my... Uh, Bears didn't play, obviously, because we, we were on a bye week, so um, that's why I haven't really mentioned them. Um, just while we're on the end, who, who's going to win it? And I know very, very quickly. Who, who's, are you st- who are you still going for or not? Or I've, I've been touting the books. Uh, they didn't do so well. They didn't do so well this week, actually. They look really, really uh, off the money. And then I've been watching the Cardinals last couple of weeks, and they've looked really, really decent. But Kyle Murray's out, and they've started. They've started, and Super Cam comes back and scores two touchdowns on with his first possession of the ball. Did you see that? Did you see him? It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, he's back! Look, he's back in the game. Oh, there's a touchdown. It's like he'd never been yeah. away. <laughs> no, it, to be fair, it, it did look like he'd never been away. He looked really good. He, you know, he probably shouldn't have left the Panthers in the first place. They should have kept him yeah. there because it, it certainly didn't work out for him at the Pats. So, yeah, my money's probably still on the books. The Bills are definitely, definitely... You see, big, I said big, Bills. Big, I, I said the uh, Bills. I, they were my team uh, as much as I would love it to be the Bears, but that ain't going to happen. Um, you know, I, I said the Bills are looking pretty cool. So, um, anyway... Just, um, I, I want your thoughts on, um, and I'm going to throw a couple of questions out here um, because we've got Dave on who did the sort of Dave was advocate. We've then done Adam who was asking questions um, on the back of, I think, Dave's sort of podcast. So, um, England won 10 0 last night in a, an international football match against San Marino. So, in a way, my question to you is, how do you stop like the meaningless friendly games? I, 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 like Nobody enjoyed that because you go into the game and you know you're going to win. As professional sportsmen, you know, not that I've ever been at that level, but as professional sportsmen, you know you've got to go and perform, you know you've got to be ruthless and all of that to get to the very top level. But how do you stop that? What, what, what would you do to stop the... 8 0, 9 0, 10 0 games are meaningless games. What would you do? Was that a friendly? No, no. No, oh, was it a qualifier? Was it? Yeah. Qualifier, yeah. Yeah, you did say friendly. I, I, you yeah. can... Oh, sorry. My mistake. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Conf- yeah, I confused me. I thought I thought it was a qualifier. Yeah. Um, what do we, what do you do to stop the meaningless, what in qualifying games like that? Yeah. I don't know. Do, 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 do you see the qualifying parts? But then again, you, you could end up with Dross getting through then, though, couldn't you? That's what I'm saying. So, what, what, what is it you could do? Because obviously, there's lots of clamour for what was the point. Players can get injured. The players have less opposition. Da 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 da. You know, you're not telling me that Man City, you know, Liverpool, Chelsea. I won't put Arsenal in there because they're not a big club anymore. But all your big clubs, you know, why you then not going to be very happy with their players trotting out and playing against San Marino, where you've got basically like a plumber, an electrician, a teacher, and a de- like hatchet men and potentially getting injured so what, what, what do you do to you know if you if you were Arsene Wenger who is is he, is he 
FIFA or whatever he is, or UEFA or wherever he is, and he's he's director of global football. What what would you do? How how would you how would you shape that to stop those ten nil, eleven nil, twelve nil games? I'm not I'm not sure you 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 need to stop them. No, I don't think you do, dude. Okay, it's not it's not the uh, the World Cup brackets. Only the biggest football nations, top sixteen, maybe. It's the World Cup, and every every is it is it re- continents or regions or however, yeah. however they do it. They have qualifiers to get through, and yeah, you know, and, and you're always going to have teams get through that are obviously not as good as 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 the better teams. That's just the way it is. Um, so I don't think you should stop it now. So, so I'll throw it out there then to you because a suggestion that I heard, but I agree with is: Do you not effectively have a pre-qualifying so you get San Marino? Andorra, whoever, 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 playing amongst themselves, Gibraltar playing amongst themselves, and maybe the top two from that bracket then go into European qualifying. So so not every team, so effectively you have a pre-qualifying. Would that work? Why would you punish them just on the basis of race there that we're talking about? Like, you're not good enough, the old Andorans. You know, you're not good enough, the old San Marinans. You're not good but, but enough to, be, to mix it with the big boys. But, Could it be like the FA Cup where you just have the lowest teams sort of build up to it and then you start coming in mixing with the big boys? Well, yeah, Andy, absolutely. Well, that's what they're saying. They're saying, you know, one guy was like, it's just the same as the FA Cup. Well, well, it isn't because the the first round of the FA Cup, you've probably got, I'm going to, let's say, I'll say to town or whatever, you know, not they've ever got to the first round, but they would have played like five qualifying rounds to get through to that that bit. So they they've already played excuse my friend, shit teams and they beat the shit team, they beat another shit team, they beat another shit team and then all of a sudden they get into the first round and they get drawn against a Div 1, Div 2 team or whatever. So should we not have that for international? So Gibraltar play San Marino and Andorra and whoever else but Liechtenstein and then the winners of that little mini league then get drawn in one of the bigger leagues. I don't know. But what? But this is this is their cup final. This is their opportunity to shine. This is this, their time to tell their stories. You remember that time I played against the greats like Emil Smith Rowe? But you say that, right? And 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 and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I don't know if I've said this before in a podcast, but my cousin played half these. We played for Vauxhall Motors, and they and he played an FA Cup game against Spurs. And that was his, like, oh, my God, I, I, we went to White Hot Lane and we played Spurs. That that was, like, the, the crowning glory of his footballing career. But these guys, it's not like, oh, my God, I'm playing against England. It, I get to play two games against England, two games against Italy, two games against... And, and it's not there. Do, do you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, the, these minnow teams, it's like, yeah, I take your point. You shouldn't be taking it away from them, but should they be playing these type of players every time they play? I just remember a game against San Marino going back to probably when we were kids. We joked at the start about this being the 96th episode and we talked about Euro 96. Are you going to talk? Go on. I forget, I forget the, the lad's name, but San Marino, we beat him 7-1, but 16 seconds in, we were 1-0 yeah. down. And yeah. it's, it's those moments are what football's about. I, I think the danger is if you don't give people like that the opportunity... You get what you get with the English Premier League now, where it's it's just horrible. Where it's more about money than it is about football. So, so you think that if we don't allow these type of games, it's likely to become what effectively was thrown at is like a European Super League, where actually there's no promotion relegation. You just get the same countries playing the same yeah. games, and and it, and that's how it just goes. There's no so, 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 you, so you would just keep it as it is. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like a Super oh. League. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a super league, yeah. So you don't have many of the minutes. You just get England, Spain, Italy, Germany, France, whoever playing themselves, and that's it. But that's the yeah. danger, isn't it? Because where would you draw the line? Well, let's just have Argentina and Brazil play for the World Cup final and forget everything else. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Why bother? Why, why have four teams? Because, you know, the best two teams are there. And if you're going to have four, then you might as well have eight. If you're going to have eight, you might have the 16. And then you might as well give everyone a chance. Yeah. And if you draw, and, and if you go down that route, then you turn around and say, and I'm going to do them a massive disservice now. But when was the last time a team from the Concacaf, which is like Australia, New Zealand, and the Samoan Islands, when when was the last time they got through a group stage? So actually, what's the point of having them in? So even though they qualified for the World Cup, when was the last time they? Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like where, where, where do you? 
And I'm only well, playing devil's but, advocate here, but where, where do you draw the line? Well, that's what that's where the rotation of where the big tournaments are comes in, you know, because if they get the opportunity to host, then that is Australia's time to shine, to show, you know, the world what they can do. When you think uh, when it was held in Africa that time, don't get me wrong, the different, you know, the... the, the I forget which country in Africa it was held in. To be honest, was it was it South Africa? Who well, actually I've got a, yeah, historically had a fairly decent football side. South Africa, the Vuvuzelas, you know, they have the oh, big things the like that. They, they bloody noisy. Yeah, 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 that should have been confiscated. But <laughs> as for everything else about that tournament, it was wonderful just to see that different bit of culture, just to see how Africa uh, has been affected by football, and just to see how the different yeah. nations are embracing how it's yeah. played there. And I think that's wonderful that it is. It's a universal language. You know, yeah, fair yeah. enough. We talked earlier, it can be universal language of hate and racism uh, <laughs> in some of the areas. But it is a universal language. That it's a game that everybody understands. Yeah, and yeah. I, no, I, I think I think I'm with you guys. I think I think everybody should be given their day and given an opportunity. Because you know, for these guys, you might get, and I'm not saying it happens, but you might get a, a plumber from San Marino who, or, or you know, a, a, a Sparky from Gibraltar or whatever who. Actually, he's okay at the game, and somebody might see that, and he might be able to turn around and say, "You know what? I'm not going to get to the English Premiership, but I might be able to play for an, an, an Italian Div Two side or, or whatever." Do you know what I mean? I, I, whoa, 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 steady on, dude. Jeez, you won a couple of games, have you? Bloody hell! Look at him now. <laughs> but I think I think right. the, the other go the on, other, Dave. Um, the other thing is that. Um, it's the opportunity for. I mean, didn't watch. I didn't watch the England San Marino game, but um, you know, you know who your opponents are, and Gareth Southgate can make his own judgment about their quality. And it's an opportunity to play. You know, you, perhaps your second choice players who wouldn't get an international game at all. And, and international football isn't just the ninety minutes on the pitch; it's the whole experience of travelling and that, yep. that or going to another country. I, I don't even know if it's home or away, but. Generally speaking, you, you could be away, so it's a whole yeah. train away. Yeah, it's away, San Marino, yeah, yeah. So it's the whole camp environment, and that experience is vital because those second-choice players might be first choice next year, two years, three years' time. You take these games out of the equation, and, and then you are down to friendlies. And, yeah. and if you're going to say, well, do you want a friendly or do you want a competitive game against um, a weaker team, you might actually want a, a competitive game because there's something that matters on the result. You know, so yeah. I think there's other opportunities and other benefits be- besides just the this is the World Cup. I mean, it kind of says it on the tin what it should be. Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, fair, fair enough. And I think, I think, I think I am with you guys. I think again, playing devil's advocate, there are lots of people that will say it shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be able to just to turn up and the result is known, and it wouldn't matter what team you played. The result is known. England were going to win that game. Didn't matter. And then somebody came on the radio, I was listening to talk spot, and they said, well, why don't you have a handicap system so Sam Marino should have started 7-0 ahead? Well, oh, the, well, that's not going to work, because how, how would you work out how, how many goals? You, it, it just That's just not going to work. So, I mean, it, that, that was sort of thrown out um, almost immediately, the guy that came on. It's funny, because he tried to then continue to argue his point, you know, like the presenters, I think it might have been Andy Goldstein, so he was just like, and he basically just had him over a barrel, he's like, really? Well, what about this, and what about this, and what about this? And the guy just kept going back. Well, it just shouldn't happen, should it? It's like, what is that all you've got, sort of thing? And and honestly, it, it was quite quite sort of entertaining uh, li- listening to. But I think I'm with you guys. I think just it, it is what it is. It's meant to be a World Cup. Give the guys a chance, and you know what? If they get battered, it's a story they can tell in the pub the following night, and they they just go from there, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I got a little update. Wait, go on, guys. No, go on. I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, good lad. <laughs> I think I think it's the smell more than the taste. It's horrendous, Dave. I'm with you, honestly. Well, I, I I I gave up. Sorry. I don't blame you. Nobody blames you. Nobody sorry, blames you. Nobody. You well, 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 me, but sorry. Welcome, welcome to the um, hating the Duchess Club because yeah. you did like. I'm not a massive fan, so no. Uh, th- there's absolutely no apologies there when the Duchess is uh, is concerned. Um, staying with it and. Uh, staying with the sporting theme, and I'm going to lead it on to a, a question in a minute. You know me, I'm a massive darts fan. Fallon Sherrick and Lisa Ashton, to be fair, ladies who are doing really, really well within the men's game. Fallon Sherrick averaged 101, I think, a couple of nights ago, which by anybody's calculation, male or female, is 
a fantastic average. Uh, yeah. Potentially, I think if she wins, she, I think she's playing a bit later tonight. If she wins, she can qualify for the knockout stage of the Grand Slam. The first time a lady's ever done that. So my question to you is, what sport do you think that women could stroke should compete with men on a level standing, on a level playing field? What sports do you think that actually, you know what, and I'm not saying now, but in a number of years, they could actually play against men in a competitive environment. Now, I'm going to take out horse racing because there are female jockeys who do very, very well. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take out motorsport because they are, you know, the, the female sort of motor. But what are the sports? So football, rugby, darts, cricket, tennis. What, where do you where do you think or what sports do you think that women could compete with men on a level playing field? Are you talking um, team sports or individual sports? Take, take your pick. I, I'm, I take your pick. I, I'm, I'm sort of open canvas, blank canvas. Go, go for your life. I, I, I'm not going to answer with a specific at the moment, but I think very broadly speaking, if it's a team sport and it involves any kind of physical attributes, it's very difficult to see it happening because men Why? are just naturally bigger and stronger generally. So, so if I say boxer, so I'm going to, and, and I knew you were going to say this, so I'm going to throw it back at you. If I said boxing and I said, okay, could a man fight a woman? Or a woman fat a man. Well, that's why I said, uh, are you talking team sports or individual? Because when you get to individual, of course, you, you, the, the physical attributes of some women are obviously going to be bigger and stronger than some men. Absolutely. So if you said a middleweight, so if you said, right, you have that weight, mm. is there any reason why a woman at that weight could not fight a man at that weight? Well, it's getting a bit technical on the physiology, but um, on the basis that they could have the same muscle strength and the same weight, then, 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 possibly not. But that's uh, you know, I, I don't. It's I don't... probably unethically. It's probably unethical in the society we live in at the moment. But I'm just playing. I'm just thinking, where's it going to go? Because you've seen lots and lots of sports that historically people would say massively male dominated orientated, so football and rugby and 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 I know this more of a skill element. So you look at darts. It's not a physical sport. It's a skill based sport. Is there any reason why women can't compete with men on the same stage? Well, in darts, they're, they're now starting to do that. But it just made me think about where where sport going to go, and could you ever envisage a time where male and female compete at the same sport at the same level? See, Andy and I uh, stay very quiet. You try to ah. trip us up with racism, and now you're moving on to sexism. I tell you what, it's a it's <laughs> well, a well, haz- it's a hazardous minefield. <laughs> <laughs> We we talk Just well your enough, thoughts, but... look, I'm not going to, I'm not going deep. No, no, no. I don't want to trip you up, but but I don't want you to get well where women are weaker than men or men are stronger no, or whatever. We... I'm not on about that. It's just where do you think it's going to go? We we talked when we went up to Scotland with the double trouble guys, didn't we? We talked about women in sport and obviously because we were looking at disabled players playing in sport as well. And I think darts is the one sport, if you want to call it a sport. There's a, there's a little bit. It is bit a sport. It is yeah, a sport because it is registered sport England as a sport. So yeah, it is a sport. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I agree with you. There's going to be some that, that that would perhaps disagree with that, but it's the one sport where physiology or anything doesn't come into it. And like you say, with the likes of Fallon Sherrick, the likes of Lisa Ashton, very, very talented players should be given the opportunity, as should, uh, you know, th- th- there's no need for separation in between sort of male and female because there's nothing in the way that the, the male human body is made up that gives them any advantage over the sort of the female human body as to why they would be any yeah. better. So yeah. it's it's one of those things. I see that as the natural progression for the sport. And Fallon Sherrett will be there or thereabouts. Because like I say, if you can average 101 on TV with that crowd behind you, and to be fair, she does get the crowd behind you rather than the old yeah. price against them. <laughs> you know, she, 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 she has that little bit of a benefit, I think, can put the opposition off at times. But I tell you what, if I was in the crowd, I'd be cheering her on. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I talked about, I was going to take out sort of horse racing and show jumping was the other one because obviously, you know, they're very, very successful sort of female show, show jumpers. Um, but you look at 
horse racing, so Rachel Blackmore, you know, Brian Frost, uh, Holly Doyle, you know, very successful female jockeys who are effectively cutting it with the blokes. They, they you know, they're getting some of the bigger rides. They're they're, they're starting to get more, much more recognised, and and it just made me think about: Can you ever see a mixed international team? So if you turn around and said, right, England are playing, let's say France in football. And actually, within England team, there are four four ladies. So you've got the yeah, so. Can you ever see that happening? Because it's is it if it is now we're sitting there thinking. I mean, well, that's unethical because what happens if the guy absolutely crunches the woman? Well, what happens if the woman crunches the man? You know, can can we see that happening? I don't know. Well, the, the, there's a on that very point. I mean, you you were on the episode where I, one of the episodes you were away, and um, I was talking about the football team I've got. Uh, I'm running a under nine girls football team, playing in a uh, boy. Well, it's a, it's a mixed league, but all the other teams are almost exclusively boys. Okay. And um, you see them on the pitch, and they they tackle as fiercely and as hard. Yep. And, competitively as the boys now they're under nines so um physically there's not that much of a difference um yeah. their, their strength and size yeah uh, you take that into adults and that's where the differences start to happen um so i think it, it's difficult but then i i was reading and i can't i can't remember obviously but there was a um, a female i don't know if it was in australasia or in one of the Chinese leagues where a female was playing in a professional men's team. And it was the first woman that's playing in a professional wow. men's team. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be able to Google it quick enough uh, because I can't I can't remember enough details. But when I was doing my reading and background into women's football, taking on this girl's team, yeah. that, that's one of the things I, I picked up at there. So is it is it ever going to be possible? Well, I, I, I would not rule out a female um, play in professional football in a, in a predominantly men's team. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and is there any reason why that shouldn't happen? And I'm not saying it ha- it's, but, but it's, is there a distinction between a physical sport, football, rugby, whatever, or a skill based sport and darts, snooker? You know, so there's it, the physical attributes between men and women don't come into it. And it's more just of a, and I'm not saying football aren't football's not skillful, but it, it's not a physical sport. It's more of a skill based sport. So, is there any reason why a female snooker player can't enter the World Championships and win the World Championships? Well, didn't that happen recently? What the the lady that was married to uh, Mark somebody or other they were married and then separated and they hated each other and they they were drawn against each other in one of the tournaments about six months oh, oh, oh i don't know I, 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 I don't know i knew that no oh, yeah i remember that i can't remember the names and they, they, they wouldn't re- shake hands or anything would they yeah they refused to talk to each other because they, they were you know um separated and not very happy with each other but they were playing each other and so that was in the professional game and that was a bona fide a tournament was sanctioned by a particular governing yeah, body yeah. and male and females were eligible yeah. to play if they qualified yeah yeah so it's the same the same as dot i guess there is no i mean you called you, you at the start of this question you you said um the darts play i can't remember her name but she was playing in the the men's league and i was going to ask you is it is it a men's league she's playing in or is it no, just no it's just a league yeah, it's a league. It's just historically, it's always just been a men. So it's not yeah. a men's league. It's you just called a league. It, yeah, you yeah. call it a men's league, but it's not. Yeah. yeah. Um, which which is is I was going to say part of the problem, but I don't I don't mean that as a, having to go at you. But no, 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 no. I'll take your point. Yeah. Perception. It's it's a men's thing, which then just makes it. You know, yeah. Oh look, there's a there's a there's a female in this, and it becomes the exception rather than just the why not. Yeah, and 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 I think. You know, I, I it, obviously when I was thinking the question, it, it got me musing about various sports, and I thought there's no reason why female golfers can't compete with male golfers. Okay, the males might, they might because. So why are you going to argue that because they're physically stronger? And I don't that that's a massive broad sort of brush, but they hit the ball further. But there's no reason why 
a female golfer because it's a skill based and a new man needs strength and being supple and all of that. But there's no reason why a female golfer can't compete with a male golfer. There's no reason why a female dart player can't compete with a male dart player. There's no reason why a female, you know, crown green bowls player can't compete with a male crown green bowl player because because the physical nature of the sport. So what about something like fencing or archery or you know, are you telling me that females and males can't learn to shoot a bow and compete on a level playing field? Well, maybe they do already. I mean, I don't know enough about archery, but yeah, I did. So I wouldn't know enough about it. Yeah, so but so so so. so, 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 so Guys, c- 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 go on, sorry, Dave. On golf, don't don't they have? I'm I'm going back a long time when we used to play like 20 years. Don't they have like female tees on the golf course? Yeah, they do. So they will have female tees, and so effectively, female tees are are moved forward. So if the, sh- the course becomes shorter for the for the female golfers because historically they can't hit the ball as far. Um, and I suppose if you took, you know. 100 female golfers and 100 male golfers, yes, the male golfers would hit the ball further as a group of male golfers, but there are certainly female golfers that can hit the ball further than some male golfers, if I'm making sense. So, But there's no reason why you couldn't have a situation where a, a female golfer couldn't can participate. And there's the odd tournament around the world where it's like a team event and two guys will partner each other and another two guys will partner each other and then Actually, one of the pairs is a male and a female golfer, and they've paired up and they play as a pair. Um, but it just got me thinking about, and I think, I suppose I'm thinking more in particular the physical sports, really, where the differences between male and female. So, foot, and I'm going to say football, rugby, you know, basketball, Andy, you know, can you ever see a, 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 a time where, and I'm not going to say, yeah, could a female play point guard for a male basketball team? Yeah, it was like football. Yeah. I think there are the odd ones that could easily slot in, and you wouldn't really notice. Um, but going going back then, archery there is mixed teams. They do male and female sort of duos okay. and stuff like that. Um, but is that it's is- a big? So when you do it, but as a team, you might have one male, one female, and then. Every team is one male, one female. Yeah. But in that, terms that's, of that's as a competition, could a female enter it as an individual and a male enter it as an individual and have an equal opportunity in order to win that? I suppose that that's where I'm going with it. Is are, are we going down the route of you will always see male and female sports being separate, or will there be a, a divergence where? And as we said, where at some point you might get, you know, um, I say. Play Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool. You might get two or three female players, or a female coach, or whatever. You know that that's that's where I'm going. I think with it, it's think, probably doing like female commentators and stuff, aren't they? And, and analysts on football. Yeah, but um, just just take it for another turn is um, like trans people in sports. That's quite a hot topic for in Australia. Yeah, that especially. is. Yeah, that is hot topic. Wasn't there somebody that was there a trans that? Let me get this the right way. So born a born a male, but then entered a fe- entered a female weightlifting competition, and then like broke a world record or something as a female oh, yeah, yeah. or something. He, 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 a she, sorry. Bro- I was going to see you said he, she. <laughs> <laughs> this person broke a load of records, um, entered like some big competition, and and got beat. <laughs> so yeah, they didn't even win it. He lost a. I've lost Dave or keep going. I, I was thinking of that, and there's a there's a few incidences in in athletics as well where there's different people who partook in different sports, born as a man, you know, had had the surgery and is now legally a female. And there's a there was a bit of a ruckus and a kerfuffle about those those sort of individuals as well and their right to perform and and if they can't perform, then you know why you know that that sort of that sort of clouds the boundaries as to as to when men will be able to perform against women. So here's a really really, and I I wasn't going to ask this, but and I wish Dave was in there because he, he might be able to answer it. But and in a way, I can't believe I'm going to say this. So is the is the obvious boundary between male and female blurring because you've got trans and this, that and the other. 
and therefore do sporting bodies need to revisit their rules and regulations to allow trans or whatever it may be do you know it so where where is that where is that gonna go in and athletics I, they, they measure it on the um, testosterone levels so yeah there's a do. lot of women that have have been questioned on their, their their sex and they've measured their testosterone and says well you're above this range or whatever and what, well, what's was happened it? is a lot of women have had testosterone injections to beef up or whatever and that's why you know, well i know it is it, a certain it, level was that the case? Was it Casta Samaya? Is that is that what is that yeah. is that the lady's name? Casta Samaya. So she she yeah. was she's female, but but and she was born female and she is a female and but she has she has um ele- elevated testosterone hormones in her body for, for, for whatever reason. I don't understand. Don't understand. I, did you get some feedback then? Ad? Look at your face there. Yeah, a little bit. I think someone's trying to book a taxi. Um. And, and I think it's Cast, I think it's Casta Samaya that 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 it is that person, and and she's like, no, I'm a female. I'm born a female. I want to race as a female, but she had elevated levels of testosterone, and they said actually that was above the allowed level. So therefore, she was stripped of various titles and stuff, wasn't she? Probably above my level, I reckon. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a it's such a grey area, isn't it? Um, because you know you, you've got to have a, a level playing field, and um, if you if you do if you do if you are born a male and then you you transgender to female and then want to compete in female sport, you know that that's that, that's not fair, is it? You know it's not fair because you physically if it, if it's something like the weightlifting, you know just because you've transgendered and you're now saying you're female, if you're physically male. You know, and in a strength-based um, individual competition, it's not fair, is it? So, so, I, so okay, I, I take your point, and I, I think I agree with you. But therefore, is there a distinction between physical-based sports, skill-based sports? So, are you saying that if if somebody was born um, a male and then transgendered to female, they would not be allowed to weightlift? play football rugby but they would be allowed to play darts archery crown green balls because it's a it's a skill based as opposed to physical based um well yeah yes you're right that they, they wouldn't make any difference but equally if i mean I, I professional football in the uk for example i don't think there's a rule that says you can't play professional football in a men's in, i've just said it in a men's team you can't you couldn't play for man united there's no rule that says if you're female, you can't play for the Man United first team, is there? Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, it's I in the title. I don't know where there is. Man United. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, Man and females have got arses, mate. Arsenal is fine, you know. <laughs> um, so, so on that on that basis, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't yeah. matter whether you were born female, or born male. If, if you're good enough at the sport, you can compete. But if it's an individual sport like boxing, like weightlifting, where the physical attributes, your bone density, your bone strength, your muscle fibres, your muscle strength, and all that sort of stuff. Um, then I think it, it, it gets very difficult to say it's a, yeah. it's a level yeah. playing field. Gaz, did you, did you want to chuck this out there? Did you want to issue a challenge to the podcast world? If there's four female podcasters listening to this who think that they can compete with us on whatever sports, you pick the sports, we'll compete, preferably <laughs> not boxing, I don't want to get punched in the face. But anything you know we will we will take you on and see who is best and settle this the only way we know how by losing badly yeah but but adam you're I'm terrible at every sport apart from darts aren't you i'm not great at darts i don't know what that comes <laughs> no, to, no, to be fair he, he he's okay at darts he, he he talks himself down he's okay at darts but anything that requires any form of I say physical coordination. I know darts his hand eye, but anything that involves him moving, he's shocking up. So, um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I just it was just it was just an interesting thought that with, with and I was obviously watching darts. I'm a massive darts fan, and and I was watching Fallon Sherrick play, and I thought, okay, she's a female trailblazer along with Lisa Ashton. Let's not forget Lisa Ashton. She's a phenomenal darts player as well. And and I don't want to say a female darts player. I just want to say a darts player because it doesn't matter whether male or female because she's beating men, women, you know, 
Um, and it just got me thinking about where where that boundary might go. And is there a distinction between male and female? Is there a distinction between physical based sport attributes like weightlifting and football and rugby and all of those other things? Boxing. Well, think think back to our trip up to Scotland where we, we visited the World Cup of Disabled Darts. And that was their biggest challenge was to get to be seen as darts players, not to yep. get to be seen, not as they are seen, sorry, as disabled people playing darts. Yeah, they're and just I, darts players. Ex- yeah, exactly. And that's the same sort of thing here. That This is this is probably Fallon Sherry's biggest challenge. And Lisa Ashton, I keep forgetting about Lisa Ashton, let's say a very, very talented player, is to be seen as a darts player, not a female darts player playing against yeah. men. It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be the thing because, you know, I've, you know as soon as she sets, sets up there, She's on an even playing field with, with most yeah. of those guys. 101 average is fantastic. Yeah. I've never achieved and, and, that. I've never achieved yeah. that. You, well, to be fair, you, you, you struggle to score 101 with <laughs> six starts, let alone three. <laughs> but, um, but so, and, and you know, and, and as I say, it, it, that's, that's what got me what got thinking of in terms of where we are. are. Are there sports available? Are there sports out there in which male and female can compete? on a level, even playing field. Um, and I was just curious, just because a couple of incidences, you know, sports are getting much more prevalent, female sports. So are you a professional footballer or are you a female or male professional footballer? Does it matter? Well, I don't know. I say with, with my team, um, and we, again, we touched on this uh, uh, when I was on the podcast previously, is that when we set the, the girls' team up, um, we were very clear that we were going to refer to them as players. And, yeah. and so I coach them uh, and it's really, it's quite difficult to start with to call them players, not girls, because they are then coaching uh, the Wildcats, which is an all girls thing. It's not a team. It's just like 60 girls that come to play football. And then you're calling them girls. And then I coach an Albert's team, which are boys. So you're saying boys, that one, then you're saying girls, then saying players. So I'm in three different environments, saying three different yeah. things. But with the team, it's very much players because it, you know, it it, it should be gender neutral. Um, I, I think because we're play we're playing in a mixed league, so it's not boys against girls. It's people playing football. It just plays, yeah. Mm. And and it goes back to when we were up in Scotland. You know, I got well myself and Adam got asked by Snowy. It's like how many, you know, how many. Um, disabled darts players are in your league and it's like well there aren't any it's like well would you see them as disabled darts players well no they just want to be darts players it, it, irrespective of the disability irrespective of their sex or whatever they just want to be seen as those type of players do you know what I mean um, and, and and I was just curious as to what your thoughts were on where that might go and can you ever see a time when one, two, three, four, five female players play for Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal in the Premier League, and and I, I I suppose are we saying yeah we can see that, or are we saying no we can't see that? I I would say I would say we will see that. I think there's other challenges, just very basics like the changing rooms. Yeah, was, yeah. For example. There's logistics in there in terms of that yeah. happening, but in terms of as an as a player, if somebody you always turn out say if you're good enough, you're young enough. Well, if you're good enough, why does your gender then mean that you can't do that? You know, a 16-year-old Wayne Rooney bursts onto the scene and curls a fantastic shot over David Seaman into the top right corner of, of, of the goal, and he bursts onto the scene as a, a as a youngster for Everton. He then goes on and scores loads of goals for England and this, that, and the other. So if you're good enough, you're young enough. If you're good enough, you're old enough. You've got boxers who are... 42, 43, 44 years old, still performing at various sports. You've got darts, you've got, you know, people performing at, at certain levels, irrespective of their age. So therefore, should we then expect maybe in the future that irrespective of your gender, you're able to compete at a particular level? I think absolutely. I think I think it will happen. It will start with the lower leagues and, and, and it will it will eventually get there. I don't think you'll ever get a team of females competing in um, certainly not top fight football or even professional football, because I think across the board of a squad of 15, 20, the physical attributes would would, would be too 
too too much too different but individuals within a team uh, yeah i think that absolutely will happen yeah so if you if you put if I you put, girl, i can see my girls play now you see and one of them in 15 years time they're going to be playing the premiership uh, and i hope and i hope that happens mm-hmm. genuinely I hope that does because and you look at some of some of the players in the WSL, the Women's Super League and stuff, and you think, if you took that one player out of, let's say, Arsenal's ladies' team and put them in the back four of Arsenal's team, to be fair, they probably improved the back four of Arsenal's team because they're rubbish. Get out but, of here. Get out but, of here. You know, but you can see that, can't you? You can see, actually, there's no reason why that one female player could not go into that team. And if you could, if you think, well, there's no reason why that one female player can't, well, why can't two or three or four go into that team? I've got a question. I know we're quite late and quite deep into this podcast, but we think we're all being open-minded here and talking about the two genders, male and female here. But, the, you know, what we're talking about gender neutral and things like this. You know, what, where, where does that fit in with what we're talking about? Well, if it, I mean, if, if we're talking about being, you know, can a, can a, 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 Female born female playing a male team. But I'm 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 not I'm not then, talking then, about I'm talking about gender neutral here, where you know gender doesn't even come into play. We're not talking about we're not looking at somebody's they were born like this, so this is what. So you're, they are. So, you're so they present as a as a they rather than a he or a she, you know. And this is me playing devil's advocate. And and and, abs- and and I'll fire back at you and say, and I'll play devil's devil's advocate. And say, is that then not up to the sporting bodies and individual sporting bodies to then recognize and accept that or not because i don't think there's a i don't think there's a one a, a sort of a, a brush that fits all in terms of you can't label because we talk about labels and labeling this label and that but i don't think there is a one size fits all so is that not to individual sporting bodies and governing bodies to say actually we will allow or we won't allow i don't know that's the question that's the question. Well, this goes back it? to yeah. biology, then, doesn't it? It doesn't, mm. it doesn't matter whether you're what what um, what's the word sexual preference you have. It's what biologically you are. There's like so more football so, 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 th- so do you think that 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 it is important then, Andy? So do you, and I know we're probably up to a nearly an hour now, maybe. But so do you think that that's important then? That it's so physiologically and biologically that should impact on whether you are able to play in a sport or participate in a sport or not. Yeah, it, it ties in with the whole transgender thing, doesn't it? You know, you're biologically A and you're trying to be in the group B and does it fit in or not? But, it's not but the size up to the governing bodies, but and that's what there's I've said, a lot but, to but, it. But, but taking on board what Adam said in terms of the, the, the gender neutral, one day you could present as a a male and one day you could present as a female if you are, you know, so therefore is that up to the, I, I don't know. I, I, and I, I have, I don't profess to have all the answers and, 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 you know, this could be a whole new podcast, a different podcast. And, and it, I, I'm a massive sports lover I, I love seeing people challenge boundaries, whether it's in society, whether it's in sport. And I just thought, where does it go? Do, do you know what I mean? Like, where can we see sport and where can we see the, the, the historical imbalance between male and female? Where where do we see that going? Uh, and I just thought it would be quite an interesting sort of concept as a podcast is to try to pick your, your, your brains into where, where we think that might be. I think it would be great if you if we ended up in a situation in 30, 40 years time where it didn't matter at all, whatever the yeah. score. Um, yeah. You know, and, and if a female wants to, um, you know, um, go into boxing and, and it's equal rules and it's a weight thing and they're good enough, they're good enough. Um, you know, if they want to, if you want to have an all female team in the premiership and then against all male teams, if they're good enough, they're good enough. If it's mixed, yeah. if they're good enough, it's good enough. Uh, and, you know, and it will find its own balance. There's a lot of prejudice and a lot of doors that have got to be opened to break through, to even give the opportunities to even try that. But you'd like to think that eventually that yeah. it will find its own level. And, and if the ability and talent and the competitiveness is, competitiveness is there, 
then it, then it will happen. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I think I'm with you there, Dave. I think, uh, in a way, I think it's inevitable it will happen just in terms of where society has gone from 100 years ago to where it might be in 100 years' time. But uh, I think it's inevitable it will happen. But we haven't had female coaches, managers in the Premier League yet. So let, let's let forget about the actual physical nature of playing the game. We haven't had a female coaches, you know. So there's a lot, there's a long way to go yet. But I don't, I don't think I see re any reason why that can't happen. If if you if you're young enough, you're good enough. If you're old enough, you're good enough. If you're good enough, it 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 doesn't matter whether you're male or female. You should be able to compete on a level playing field with your peers. I, I don't I don't see why that's an issue. But I think, Andy, maybe you're right and maybe you agree with me in terms of it's the governing bodies that maybe would, would need to issue those rules. I'm not sure the governing bodies have rules against it, though. I mean, in athletics, oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. visual sports, they probably they, they do, obviously. They, they don't allow, you know, they, they, they don't have a, uh, a mixed 100-metre sprint in the Olympics, for example. But in terms of football and rugby... You know, I don't think I'm not aware that there's rules that say that females and males uh, can't can't compete equally or, or, you know, I know that Wimbledon at tennis, there is there's a difference, isn't there? There's, there's yeah. the females and the so, males. Yeah, you know? but, but just, you could, just taking point down the Olympics, if, you know, the, the 100 metres is the blue ribbon event and, and you go back to Usain Bolt and all of that. But, you know, if there was a female athlete that could run 100 metres in 10 seconds, could she not compete with the males? Could, could you, do, do, do you know? So is it is it the men's one hundred meter final, or should well, it, it just be the it hundred is. meters final? But it is the men's, isn't it? In the Olympics, it is them. It is, and, that, and 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 this is my point: is that everybody's getting quicker. So if there was a a, a you know Kathy Freeman, the four hundred meter ladies runner and stuff, or you get a four hundred meter hurdler who is female that could hit the qualifying times or can run out equally as fast as males can she not can she not compete alongside the males i don't know well maybe um if we got to that situation they'd, they'd have to do what oscar Pistorius, which is actually basically go i mean no not adam i was going to say it's a bit not freaking extreme <laughs> <laughs> you're in the sporting sporting context yeah where, where, where he was we're not we're not condoning murder here are we um, okay. Definitely not. Where he where he uh, competes against able-bodied uh, people, and he had to fight for the right to do that. So that that that's the analogy, not the um, the other one. Yeah. Not the murder. No, I tell you that. So look, if there's you know if we've got lots of listeners out there, um, hopefully lots of sports people. It was just a, an interesting sort of thought that I had. Um, we, we're quite a long way over the hour mark now, so I, I am going to wrap it up. Maybe this is something that I'll pick up and, and run with. Um, if we have got any listeners out there that particularly feel strongly about whether they think it will or won't happen, um, please hit us up at all the usual um, to social media um, outlets as such, just TBR. Um, give us a search, give us a follow, um, hit us up, give, give us a message. Um, guys, I, I've quite enjoyed this. It, it, the first sort of 15, 20 minutes went down relatively dark route and I wasn't quite sure where we were going to go with it. And we ended up chatting about it and we did, we did. Um, I, I was interested just to pick your brains on on the, the, the sort of gender and the sport in gender as such. So, um, really enjoyed it. Um, do you want to say your goodbyes? Any final shout outs? Any final thoughts? Um, Dave, as a guest, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, well, the Duchess is foul, the uh, stone cold stunner, and the double trouble, uh, the double hops of beer club. Perfectly drink, very pleasant, very pleasant drink. Uh, Topics, it almost felt like you know, I thought it was coming to this episode a bit light hearted. <laughs> I was asking the questions because now, now I start to feel a bit like how you guys might feel when I ask the questions. But no, it's um, <laughs> not quite what I was expecting. Adam said, Don't prepare, we're just going to have a chat. And then, you, you know, you, you throw those out. But, you know, no, it's, it, it's good. You know, um, a good hearty debate. Um, and as always, we don't, none of us are experts on any of these subjects. We're just throwing what's out in our mind. And, uh, Hopefully we, we we navigate through without offending anybody. But uh, if we have, we certainly don't intend to. But uh, yeah, cheers and to quote quote Gaz, Gaz out. <laughs>
Andy? Uh, yeah, uh, it was an interesting episode. Um, we didn't even debate the Duchess, but uh, there we go. Ciao. Is there a debate about the Duchess? <laughs> doesn't doesn't feel like it now, does it? It doesn't feel like there's a debate about the Duchess. Uh, add. Uh, yeah, for me, I, I want to go back to my earlier point. I want to chuck it out. If we can find a four female podcasters out there wanting to take us on in any other sports and prove that, that women can compete against men, albeit flabbier, older men, but nonetheless, we will take you on. That's not a problem. But yeah, I've enjoyed this one. Like I said to Dave, we're just going to have a chat. I didn't know what Gaz was going to chuck out there. And that's the interesting thing about TBR. It's something different every single week. And that's what we like. And hopefully that's why you like it too. So, yeah, for me, really enjoyed this one. I'll take care. I'll catch you on the next one.